There's something that you've got to have if you want to make this work, and it's this. You know what that thing is? Today was a pretty good day. I really got some practicing done in the morning when I intended to, not like I didn't start at midnight tonight. This is, this is major progress. It is 9 p.m. right now, and I'm doing this, but the practicing has already happened. And here's the cool part. This is what happens when you do practice, or when I do practice. I want to practice more. So now I feel like I didn't practice enough, and I, and I, got, I probably got a good two hours in, you know? We had some good alone time. I got another question today that has to do with being married, having a family, being a musician, or rather kind of like being married to a musician. Uh, let me find it. This comes from Jess. Jess is going to be getting married to a musician. <laughs> Sorry, Jess. Hi, Bob. I have a question for you and for your wife. I'm not a musician, but I'm engaged to one. I also work and do not expect him to be our only breadwinner, especially when he wants to be a musician. We do want to have kids eventually, but we're not married yet, and we'll get to that when the time comes. All right, here are the four questions. Number one, how do you work around the crazy hours he has as a married... This was directed to my wife. How do you work around the crazy hours he has? I'm gonna get to that. Number two, what do you do when finances become tight? Should he give up playing for a bit and find more stable work? Number three, how do you balance everything when kids come along? And number four, what do both of you have to do to make the marriage work as well as both having careers and his practice? Having a practice, like some people go running, some people go to the gym, some people do yoga. You know, having a practice, a daily practice, that's that's not that shouldn't be something that is a deal breaker or abnormal. You know, working a life around that, that's something many, many people do. And it's actually a great thing for everybody to have some form of daily practice of some sort, I think. As far as both having careers, we've always both, my wife's a, a dancer and a, a fitness instructor, a Pilates trainer, and we, you know, so like we've both always had sort of flexible schedules. Sometimes she used to be on the road and I'd be on the road and I don't know, like as far as just like local living, you know, day to day, week to week stuff. I mean, you get, we use a calendar. Let me show you something. You got your week, all right? And this is a really, pretend this was seven days. These are just units of time, okay? So most people, you know, and this is less and less these days, but like, let's say you have your nine to five, and 9 p.m. up here, you know, and your Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then your weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Most people's weeks look like this. They're all busy in here, and then this is the free time, okay? Whereas a musician's life tends to be more like busy in here, evening hours and you know, various parts in the weekend. In order to make this work, sit down on a Sunday and map that out together. This next part is very important. What do you do when finances become tight? There's something that you've gotta have if you wanna make this work, and it's this. You know what that thing is? You need a cushion, a financial cushion. This is a big pillow. You need that. Sometimes your income is gonna look like this, and then sometimes gonna look like this, and then sometimes it's gonna look like this, and then sometimes like this, and then, uh-oh, sometimes like this, and then sometimes like that, and this will drive you crazy. And I knew this from a very young age, that this is what being a musician looks like. It doesn't look like steady paycheck every two weeks. So in order to have a fighting chance for that, you need to develop a strategy for dealing with this to even this out. And the best one that I came up with, I mean, I didn't come up with it, but I, you know, what I use is basically think of yourself like your own company. So this goes for you, the musician, anybody, the musician, and as a couple, whatever, okay? This is how it traditionally works. Okay, hi, I'm the musician, and you pay me for a gig, and then, like, I pay that money to my landlord, you know, for rent, okay, or whatever. Now, like, this is me. At the end of the month, I have zero dollars left and that's a really stressful way to go about living but when a company starts you know like when it like when a company is funded most of the time they, they they're funded with some money to start out with okay so you have you have this like this bank account to start your company because it's just at the beginning your company's maybe not going to make that much money and the hope is that over time it does and it pays this back but meantime meanwhile you have this cushion that helps fund your payroll and overhead and all that stuff well, I think it's really important to think like that as an individual musician. Here's what I'm suggesting. You start with this bank, okay, your bank, and it has this money that you've saved in it, okay? Now, every month, you gotta pay your rent, you know, and you gotta pay for food. I'm not a good, I'm not good at drawing, but let's just say you have food, okay? You have your expenses that need to be paid, okay? And then you have you two guys over here. Rather than like taking the money you make and then paying your rent and paying your food and whatever and living like that, 
No, you pay your company. This is you, Inc. You pay your company. You fund this. And then every month, this company pays the rent and the food, and it also pays a salary to Joe and Jane over here. Okay. Now look, it's not super easy at first, but what I want to convey to you is it's never too early to start thinking about this. All right. I was thinking about this since I was a kid, since probably even before I was playing music, but certainly once I started music, this is a really, really, really important concept to start thinking about. And it's what has allowed me over time to weather the ups and downs of, of a music career, you know, the feast or famine sort of approach. So if you establish this, you know, like when I came out of college and moved to New York, I'd been saving since I was in high school. I'd been saving up this bank. When I moved to New York, I had a cushion because I wasn't going to be making any money right away, but not from gigs anyway, but I got a job, you know, I got several jobs and I had rent that was due and everything went into this. And I tried to, I tried my best to save. I've saved money for a long time. And that cushion is, is the difference between the career, you having enough time to give this musician career a fighting chance or having to bail out early because, you know, um, little babies come along or whatever. The, sorry, these drawings are, this is awful. You know, this is an awful drawing. You've got to have a cushion, all right? And this will be the thing that allows you not only to, to develop that career, uh, but to, to maybe, you know, make the, hopefully give the marriage a good shot within this crazy chaotic mess that is trying to have a music career. You know, I mean, the heck. As far as how to balance everything when kids come along, that is only, that's gonna test your infrastructure. If your infrastructure as individuals and as a couple is not in place, and then you add kids into it, I put off having kids for quite some time because I was terrified that like it was gonna, I, that my infrastructure wasn't in place yet. Shortchanging the kid or the kids was never gonna be an option, so therefore I knew that my career was gonna take you know, take the hit. You do the best you can, but the, honestly, the, the takeaway that here that I can give you, the two main things are use a calendar, share a calendar. Like I, I try not to say yes to gigs before checking with my wife and we tra we check in at least every week, you know, like, hey, what's your week look like? What's my week look like? Where, where are there possible conflicts or what can we, you know, we try to literally get on the same page with that stuff. It, sometimes it works better than others, but be flexible, pay attention to money, but you just got to learn how to respect and handle your money or it will handle you and it'll make your life miserable. So that idea of a cushion of, of a bank of treating yourself like the company and, you know, putting money in that and then taking money, even, even if you develop the habit, not even if, I, I suggest you develop the habit early on of starting small. So you're putting your money, your gig money, your work money, whatever, it's going into this account. You can literally have a separate like bank account for this and then just get in the habit of paying yourself a small salary that's regular. And, it, and over time, hopefully you can increase that salary, but I, but but it's a great way to get started. So then eventually it's like, it doesn't, this gig might pay a lot and this gig pays a little, but whatever, it's going into that bank and over time, you're pulling something consistent out of it. And it, it leads to a path of kind of like evening out these peaks and valleys that makes life a little bit more digestible.